Well, I can use my general presenter voice, but this is a much smaller room, so I'm gonna do that. Before we get into the presentation, I was just gonna ask you guys uh, what you think stereotypes of successful and wealthy people generally are. This room is probably gonna have very different answers than I prepared this slide for, but let's start with Aston Martin. Aston Martin. Two hands on each other. Basically, David Perry's life. Oh yeah, that's definitely mine. That's, yeah. yeah. that's me. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it's actual wealthy people. So here's a picture of a few folks. So we have uh, Paul Akers uh, is kind of the top left. We've got uh, Johnny Morris. He's uh, one of the biggest billionaires in the United States. Top 40 or something. He's in the far right. Uh, We've got a shirtless gentleman here. This is my mom's boyfriend. Um, <laughs> he's a millionaire as well. Um, and then we've got uh, my dad. He was uh, born in 29, graduated bottom of his class, and at age 84, on pa passing, he had uh, empire or two, uh, multinational, completely dyslexic. Uh, then we have my mom here, uh, and she's uh, ridiculous. And so we kind of know like the fundamentals of wealth. Um, the real thing is the habits that usually make these people. So, um, you know, we're the type of people you drive past the house, even though this lady right here in the center, I, I had the fortune of growing up around a lot of wealth. So this is what wealth actually looks like. You drive past her house, there's a bunch of bottles that are just the standard water bottles, like the Kirkland one right there, that are washed, turned upside down, and they're drying in the sun outside. And uh, make sure you don't ever let my mother see you throw a Ziploc bag away because she will make you pick it out of the trash, wash it, turn it inside out and dry because it's too good to throw it. <laughs> so, um, so we know that, we kind of already know, right, what makes wealthy people wealthy is habits. A lot of us here probably already understand those habits and are chasing those habits. So I'm going to get into this. I'm Hugh. Uh, I'm just a hick from the sticks. I have severe ADHD. I graduated with a 2.8 GPA. I'm a CMD student. I have an extremely short attention span. Uh, I worked in the IT field for five years and then I left. And so my why is probably not as strong as yours. I'm probably not as sophisticated as most of you guys in this room. Um, certainly not as educated. The reason why I tend to be successful is because of routine and habits and fundamentals that I really stick to. Um, and then, oh, by the way, I have a very short attention span. So. I'm sure you guys might notice that. Normally, if, I'm, if we're talking and I just immediately pull my phone and do something, it's because you said something and I want to take care of it immediately so I don't forget whatever the thing was. With that, my background is in industrial manufacturing. I am a process engineer by training, uh, kind of by accident. And uh, so here is a morning meeting presentation where we are in West Taiwan and there's 300 workers here and we see, so that's Paul Akers, but uh, effectively in the manufacturing space, what my unfair advantage is over all of you is in manufacturing, if you s you will be out of business in an extremely short amount of time, like maybe three months, maybe one month if you, three months if you have your shit together, a month if you don't. Um, you know, we routinely, I had to manage 350 Chinese um, <clears throat> we had to take, um, you know, $7 million of raw material in a two week to month time frame, turn that into $12 million of finished goods and then ship it and cross our fingers and hope nothing was wrong with it. And so the fundamentals and the skill sets behind that uh, was the training and that I was able to move into, into real estate, which in my opinion is extremely sloppy. Um, you can make a lot of mistakes and still come out either unhurt, unscathed, or possibly still make money. You just didn't make as much as you were hoping to. Now, you, it can, really, it can burn you too, but the main thing is there's a system, of essentially, essentially it's uh, processes that is universally applicable and you guys can apply it to your businesses. Uh, and if you are just starting out, it's way easier to start a business correctly than it is to course correct after you already have a business. So this should be applicable to everybody. This works from small entrepreneurs up to 16,000 people companies to 50,000 people companies, which I have consulted for. In 15 months, so it started, I learned about so zero real estate experience, absolutely zero understanding. This is the time frame of events. In August of 2019, I found out about bigger pockets, trying to buy solar panels. And the guy was like, I kept trying to provide him value. He's like, don't buy my solar panels, take the money, buy real estate, use the paper electricity instead. All the episodes of BP that was available and all the books that they recommended, and listening at 2x speed 
And uh, on December 31st, 2019, I bought 26 crack houses. And uh, that was a portfolio loan, didn't have any experience. The math was important. The math said buy them, so I did, right? So I often remember hearing Brandon Turner in my head say, hey, making a decision is more important than what the decision to make, so I made the decision to buy 26 crack houses. Mm -hmm. uh, by October of 20, uh, we had also scaled that to a motel, gas station, six unit commercial well house. Then in April 21, I partnered with Dave, we ended up buying a hotel, motel, and two apartment complexes as well. In 20, April 21, we burned a sixplex, just bought a missile silo in September, and we were able to set up, and on Monday of this week, we just uh, set up two burn bees. What's a commercial burn bee? A commercial burn bee is on the bottom, it's, it's a mixed use commercial. The bottom is commercial buildings, they basically cover the note, the upstairs are two lofts. And then, uh, so in 15 months, I became a millionaire. Uh, on day 60, this is actually me becoming a millionaire. This is when I signed the paperwork with Dave. Um, and so that is a yeah, six by six. Him, hey, Hugh, I'm still in California. Make sure you send me a picture signing the document so I have something for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I got. This did not disappoint. <laughs> Dave did not give me very specific instructions, so I got to do this. Um, so, yeah, so this is 60 days. You'll, say, you'll see that it says day 60. A lot of so a lot of things occurred becoming a millionaire and doing all this stuff and scaling after bringing on a team member and so we're going to kind of go over the fundamentals of that but we're going to talk fundamentals and principles as you guys can see uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick on the military because I'm familiar with it uh, and you'll see that this is the space force see how cool they look so I get along with a lot of military folks you'll see a lot of interesting things we're just going to call them transferable skills so. We'll, we'll just say, let's just take Shelby. All right, so you have Shelby. Uh, in her, her job career here, uh, her day-to-day -day looked like sitting on an airplane and trying really, really hard not to piss her pants, and then jumping out of the plane and counting to 6,000. And then you got Dave, right? So oh, yeah. Dave was paid. <laughs> I did not. I don't even know that. I'm, I'm guessing my Facebook. Uh, yeah. In his, his job description was to drive really big Tonka toys and if it became necessary, retain the ability to stick a bayonet in someone's chest. Which those general day-to-day um, -day job things that they did may not have transferred too much. Uh, you wouldn't think they would transfer into real estate. Yet here we are and we see them running really successful companies. And really what you, the military uh, brings is you've got discipline, you've got perseverance, and problem solving skills. And so you see a lot of ex-military people able to carry this way forward past that, right? Especially the last one, problem solving. Most of you guys are trained to critically think, to learn and unlearn, and solve problems before you even knew there was a problem there. So, that is an example of how a fundamental can transfer to you guys. I'm gonna be taking the time to give you the fundamentals of how companies operate um, and how you can make the most out of it and possibly be able to walk away from your company for 30 days. I'm straight up copying what billion dollar organizations are doing and copying each of you guys anytime someone comes up with something successful and then passing that information on. I copy what people do in books and so I'm just gonna pass that information on as I can. So, hiring, scaling a team. Everyone says scale a team, right? You read first hour, four hour work week, week, and the first thing you do is I'm gonna hire a bunch of VAs. You don't really uh, know anything else outside of that, right? Or bringing team members on. You know what, if I hire people, then it'll be fine. They'll do the work for me, but then you get frustrated. Well, how we hire is critically, critically, critically important because there's lots of over-processing. For instance, right now, Dave is trying to hire somebody. And so if Dave were to post in his network, he would probably have 300 applicants almost immediately with resumes, right? Dave's time is worth approximately $2,600 an hour. That is $780,000 a year. It will, over the course of the time, just look at applicants. 300 hours is what it would take, about an hour per applicant to look at. It's a complete waste of his time. He probably would look through a few, get frustrated, pick someone who is not a great fit. Well, they could be, but it's, it's a gamble. But but the main part is it's your process of hiring is garbage. 
So how you hire is really, really critical. So here's a secret for two second lean organizations and the way they hire. First off, they create a video. They create a video that captures their company and their culture, right? If I'm bald and I'm going on Bumble, I'm gonna have pictures of me being bald on Bumble. The reason why is because the people who wanna reach out and talk to me already know that I'm bald. I'm not gonna post pictures of me with hats, right? So you're pre-screening the people who are gonna be a bad fit for you anyways. Each and every one of you guys here are probably super type A, you're probably Eagle Scouts, Gold Awards, whatever it is, top of your class, flying planes, being selected for the top of the top, right? And then you go to scale a team, you get frustrated with the amount of overload that you might get and you say, oh my gosh, I'm, we just need someone right now? We just need to fill, fill the position with a warm body or who I think is the best person. Right? So instantaneously, you guys are creating a, an, an interesting scenario where you're hiring someone to replace you. Well, you guys are the ones that are gonna end up, um, if, if you just hire someone that doesn't meet your expectations, then that's kind of, a, uh, then you create more work for yourself later when you try to pass it on. Anyone who's managed people know what that feels like, which a lot of you guys have. So for our hiring process, you create the video, and then we have a teaser in there. The teaser is, hey, if you like, if you're interested in this position, send us a video. Or sorry, apply, send us your resume. If you're really interested in the position, go ahead and pull out your phone, give us a quick 60 second recording of why you think you'd be a good fit, why you think you'd be a good fit for the company, why, why you think you'd be qualified for the job, send it to us, we're excited. Cool, you post on your job sites. That video link is video description. Okay, so what you're gonna get is out of every 100 people who apply to your position and have a resume, you'll get one to three people who might send you uh, a video resume. We had 500 applicants and we had seven people that actually sent a video resume in, right? The other thing is we didn't really give very much instructions. We said, pull out your phone, turn it horizontal, Tell us about yourself. We didn't say, put it on YouTube. We didn't say you had to edit it. We didn't say how to get it to us. In the description of the YouTube video, which it was on, we have a, hey, email your video to this place. In the subject line, put, you know, I like weeders or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, you know, something, something silly. Something where there's that. So immediately, when you guys are the head of each of your organization, your time is critical and valuable extremely valuable. The one or two decisions that you guys make that could lock up something and you're gonna spend hundreds of hours digging through resumes, don't do it. Don't even look at anyone who doesn't submit a video. Right, so you've already pre-screened that. Each and every one of us here probably would figure it out. First thing Dave said was, I sent him a video in. Cool, that's the type of person that you wanna select first, then you go into your next round of interviews. You don't wanna be pouring through 800 applications, right? You wanna hire for character, trainability, and problem solving skills, and culture fit. If you can do that first, then you can indoctrinate them to be highly skilled, highly valuable for your company, period. Um, so, we got 70 people, we said, cool. You guys sent videos in, you guys made it the second round of interviews, actually one of them didn't because they sent us a vertical video and they were in a hoodie, um, but if they turned the horizontal, whatever. So they sent that in, then they said, hey, before you show up, have these two books read, All right? And for me, it's Two Second Lean and then Extreme Ownership. Be prepared to answer questions about them when you show up. Okay, then they show up, whether it's a Zoom video or not, doesn't matter. You have now pre-screened your efforts down to almost nothing. You took it from 300 applicants in the hypothetical, have a hypothetical example to maybe seven which you can donate, you dedicate that time to more carefully scrutinize them. Then you've set another barrier so when they come up, do they actually follow your instructions? So those, are right, up, right out of the gate, anybody read good to great? Okay, this, so right, it's get the right people on the bus, the right people in the right seats, and the wrong people off the bus for the analogy. The number one reason we as owners and leaders have a huge pain in our ass with employees is because we didn't get the right people on the bus at first. 
So really, really scrutinize who you're bringing on the team. This is a way to make that burden low for us. So when you get the uh, candidate or applicant and you actually want to hire them, you probably have a much higher probability of someone who's going to be awesome and you've dedicated a very low amount of work to finding them. All right, so that's that. Um, if you do that, you might, you might get someone like CEO Barry Books. This has nothing to do with my presentation, but it was in the original slide. You'll see that skill A is 90%. So I'm very impressed with this. So, um, okay, so here's the Greater Ozark Realty Principles. Okay, so how many of you have heard of or read Atomic Habits? Cool, right? Everybody generally agree with the gist of that? How many of you have heard or read Miracle Morning? Not you. You've never heard of it. <laughs> right? Okay. How many of you have heard or read Two Second Lean? That's it. I wrote it down. We talked about it all weekend. Cool. If Atomic Habits was as destructive as it was helpful, then Atomic Habits would be a, a grenade, and Two Second Lean would be a nuclear bomb as, in terms of efficiency. So, and here's why we're gonna get into that. You're about to see, and we can get into this, I can give you the resources, you can look into it, um, but effectively, in the next slide, you're gonna see the secret of things. We have a morning routine. If you have a morning routine for a uh, miracle morning that generally tends to make you a successful person, why wouldn't you have a morning routine at your company that makes you a successful company? So having a set, a morning routine is incredible. This morning routine is directly from Two Second Lean. Uh, what's happening on a psychological and fundamental level is absolutely insane, but basically it's this. First thing we do is we have what's called 3S time and sweep, sort, and standardize. During that time frame, the entire organization is not allowed to work. You can't answer an email, you can't turn on your computer. The only thing you can do is you can do something that will make your job easier. Then we have a 30 minute to 45 minute meeting where we talk about those improvements, we encourage each other, we build each other up. Then, after that, the organization is focused on training the trainers. And the way we do that is by having the trainers, having the people who need the most training are actually the people who are teaching. So you're, you're training the trainers how to teach. Does anyone know, from a standpoint of um, information retention, what it is, from a classroom setting like we're currently having right now? It's like 20%. 20%? 10%? It's 10% at best if you're not going through a language barrier. What is it if you have, if you're engaged in discussion? Okay. 30%. It's about 30%. What is it if you do? If you, right, show me. Hands on. 80%. If you're doing, if you're doing hands-on learning, it's approximately 65 to 70 percent. Anybody know what it is for teaching? 90 percent to 95 percent. Even if you aren't teaching effectively, not just that you're attend, not just that you're attending to teach, you are teaching. During the morning meeting that we have, this morning meeting cycles through the, the leader of the morning meeting cycles through the entire company. Every person comes up and they share the vision. You can read more about that in Two Second Lean. This morning meeting right here basically creates a process of habitual reinforcements. And all we do as the owners is we control what's in the meeting, what's the content of the meeting. I was talking to Shelby earlier uh, about uh, casting a vision over and over. The only way you make a vision stick is to cast over and over. Well, that gets very repetitive for people who know it. So if you have the fundamentals, you want to teach the fundamentals, you have them teach and change the examples every day. So we want to talk about, like for instance, this week, our 3S focus of the week is SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. So every morning of the week, this past week, my team has gone up and they have presented their SOPs and shared it with the group. Hey, I'm in this department and this is how you clean the bathroom. Doesn't matter that it doesn't apply to everybody else. What matters is they made the SOP and they attempted to train it. The real person being trained is the trainers. You cycle through your entire organization. 95% Actually, 98% of people, business owners, who listen to what I just said, are not going to do it. 2% will. And those 2% will have a, a lot less success. Um, those who do usually can get those levels of what they want their company to achieve. 
We are problem solvers. We want to hire people, right? You got the right people on the bus. The way you train them is critically important. If you can train them to solve problems without you, you no longer need to be there. And these lean principles, they've helped me scale. Um, I think I own 164 units right now, making about $50,000 a month passive in income. Some of that's active, zero experience 24 months ago. Didn't know anything about real estate 24 months ago, months ago, right? Helped me scale to a millionaire in 15 months, not a big deal, let me buy cool stuff, right? Got a Gatling gun, take squat max, it's awesome. Got a Tesla, a flamethrower, and uh, have all the, the military use in the in the background. You can buy bulldozers, which your CPAs will probably increase. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, you, know, you, got, you got the missile silos, you can scale. You can manage your teams effectively because your teams are behaving like owners. They are, first off, they have the owner drive, which we can get into if we have time here in a second. Um, and I also, because of that, I'm able to dedicate most of my time to trying to scale a YouTube channel. So if you guys can like and subscribe, that'd be great, thank you for video. Okay, but in 11 months, I wanted to share this with you. This is how critically important it was. That was my first hire. Everything that we've done that you've seen happened in the last 11 months with a three person team. And oh, by the way, we only have a four day work week. This entire presentation and slide was created by my team as I was driving here. I left them with an outline and framework and they were able to put all of this together. They take the organization, they take it seriously. The reason why is because you give them the responsibility. We are entrepreneurs, we have ideas. We actually, am I familiar with uh, Maslow's hierarchy? Yes. Okay, so the bottom, you have food, shelter, sex, uh, <coughs> reproductive sex, and then you've got um, <laughs> uh, some other crap like that, and you have like friendships. The top is self-actualization, self-worth, right? Really thinking intrinsically about what you do, what you wanna leave and contribute. When your entire staff says, hey, I was charged with this, and it's my ideas that I get to execute on, even though they're small. It's, hey, I moved the coffee pot two feet closer to the sink so it's not wasting my energy. And then that's celebrated. The entire time, the last person that invested in that person was some kind of youth pastor or coach for a sports team or scout master of some kind. But now all of a sudden, their entire rest of their life didn't have that. They're treated like you know the world treats you. Now all of a sudden you come into this organization that trains you, they train you to think. You don't even talk about work, by the way, that, that uh, morning meeting. We're not talking about anything work-related. At the end of the, the meeting, we then break apart and go into battle plans of what they're gonna do every day. Um, you take that person and you basically pay them enough or pay them well, not the top, not the best, but then you allow them to reach level five, self-actualization. They come up with the idea, they execute the idea, they are celebrated for the idea. That has never happened to most of, we have that because we are entrepreneurs. You're building this into people. Now you've just created, and so when you accomplish something, right, we all know we're working towards something, you've got dopamine. What happens when you accomplish a task? Serotonin. Serotonin kicks in, it pulls you down off the high of dopamine. What it does is it makes you crave another dopamine hit. And so in the morning, when we have 3S time, you're not allowed to work. The only thing you can do is make an improvement and better yourself. You just started your day off with a dopamine hit that was hit with serotonin that leaves your, your every employee in the organization now is craving more dopamine. Then you've provided them that every single day and you've trained and you poured into them. Then you turn around and you basically allow that triangle, right, Maslow's hierarchy, number five, self-actualization. Every one of your employees who works at your company gets the opportunity every day to be on that level five. Where's the only place to get that? Working for you, mm -hmm. not work. Working for you, being a part of your organization. They take the ownership buy-in, they take that, they actually run with it. Then, every day when you're saying, hey, when I move the coffee maker three feet over, that saved me 56 miles of walking this year. That's badass, that's awesome. You shared it, we celebrated at the morning meeting, the next guy, hey, that was so cool, Bill did that, I moved my coffee maker too, cool. Bill's idea was cool, but I got a curate and whatever, whatever it is. It just snowballs from there. You have an infinite amount of creativity, and then you allow them the freedom to make those decisions and run your company on your behalf. I had to play catch up after driving here for two days. 
because of all the things that my team ended up doing. It's not just, hey, uh, when you guys get back after the weekend, you're gonna have to play catch up of like what has to be done. I have to figure out like, okay, here were the goals beforehand. Now they're now the goal line has been moved or something else has happened entirely. And I'm getting the opportunity to play catch up and it's a super awesome feeling. Most of us created our companies so we can have financial freedom. The reason most of us probably did that was because we wanted to have free time. Not answer continuous amounts of emails, be constantly stressed out. You can leverage your team to do that by making them decision makers. My first hire was February 8th, 60 days later was there. You guys know the rest of the story. So yeah, so I'm gonna leave you with that. Can you walk away from your business for 30 days? I can. I'll leave for a month. Well, uh, uh, there's two resources here. One is uh, I just try to train and I help entrepreneurs streamline their business and save them time. So that's my YouTube channel there on the left. Um, two Second Lean is the book here. It's by Paul Akers. Uh, he's a rock star. And um, I read his book. It's a very big manufacturing-based flavor. Um, it's 100% fundamental. Uh, all the fundamentals apply. His examples are manufacturing-based. The accounting companies, the, all these companies who read that book and they're like, this doesn't apply to us because we're not manufacturing, they usually use it the most. So, pretty cool. But yeah, what? Uh, yeah. 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 So if you don't have a full-time employee or you don't think you have a need for one, how would you go about that part-timer? So I, I have one part-time social media, not quite to that scale, okay. how can I apply? When you read first hour or four hour work week, the first thing it says is hire VAs so you do nothing. It never gave you the instructions of how to properly hire VAs, how to properly train them and then do the stuff. I know uh, a lot of us are well listened as far as bigger pockets go. David Green will be like, hey, do these tasks. Other people might do these tasks. And that shows them they can follow tasks. If you pre-screen them the way, you'll get the cream of the crop VAs and then when you train them, it can be better. So it's the same, there is no, the needs of the organization will change, um, but you can still get the right people on the team. Maybe you do, if you have part-timers, you do a weekly sync. Like a weekly meeting or something. Right, it's how often that you guys meet. It's as necessary by your company. Can you, can you run us through your 30 minute meetings? I can, I have hundreds of them if you really want to watch one. Maybe not watch the full one, but like just like what, like what is the structure of the meeting? Yeah, I'll, I'll run that through. Do you, want to see, you guys want to see that right now? Okay. And as a, just a testament, um, some of the stuff that they do is pretty crazy. Like we had some employees at the hotel who got oh, yeah. like the making of a bed fundamentally down to like, was it like 60 seconds flat. So they basically like, when they fold everything, instead of being like, here's all the sheets and here's all the top sheets and here's all the, it's like, they basically got to where we fold it up and roll it all over the ball. And so they walk into the hotel and they go to the bed of the, the bottom of the bed and they roll it out, flip it open. And it's like 90% of the way they tuck it out. So the standard, uh, <laughs> you guys don't think about this, but the standard amount of steps it takes to make a bed, including side steps, is approximately 490 for a female that is about 5'7". Um, and we have it down to like 90 steps. And the, the way they did that is we re-engineered, uh, they, we didn't do this, I was good. They do the job. They're probably the most qualified to come up with better ways to do their fucking job, right? You guys that were in the military know exactly what I'm talking about when you're like, why the hell is this fucking blouse, this is bullshit, right? So um, they reorganized the way that they, they kitted the, so normally it's like, okay, we have the queen sheets, the sheets are here, the pillowcases are here, the blah, blah, blah. No, they did it to where as you roll, they did it, did it backwards, when in the laundry room, when they folded the sheets together, it was a kit. And so when you got to the bed, you just put it, you rolled it out, and you only stepped around the bed to fold it. You made the entire left side, blanket and all. Then you walked around to the right side, and made the entire right side, blanket and all. And then you walked off to the next, the next one. Those were examples that I didn't create and come up with. Those were things that were their um, ideas that they came up with. And they were so fucking stoked to show us too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, oh, and sure they create, they, they continuously are creating all the SOPs because everything is in video format, which we can show you hundreds of. All right, we're gonna go into Doug's presentation. <clears throat> Doug um, is gonna be described as a person who is a gentleman who had a hard life, um, maybe a little methy, probably treated like he was bottom tier of society until we inherited him as an employee. 
we gave him the training, the opportunity, and this guy works his ass off. I don't know what this is, so uh, at the beginning, zero, uh, 0755, five minute countdown, they pick their meeting, some guy use it, whatever, they, we, we give them that as long as it's not inappropriate. Sometimes you just wanna quit. He's all very inspirational and stuff. Um, then we say, welcome to the morning meeting, and it starts at exactly 08. We say who the next meeting leader is, then we go into the next few days, just as a backup plan, all the black blackouts, which are all visual controls are people who are off. We have the 3S focus. 3S stands for sweep, sort, and standardize, which you guys can learn about in two second lean. We have leave it better than you found it. Oh look, here's a video of leave it better than you found it. Uh, 3S focus of the week is leave it better than you found it. This is how it started out. So these are the windows after they were scraped and cleaned. You got all the paint off of them and everything else. Cool, so it's an example of Every day they have to go do something when you go to the bathroom, you're down, right? Because one of the fundamentals as a core, as a core principle and I want my employees to know is the habit of leaving it better than you found it. So we made it this. Well now, uh, well we'll get to the end, but now he just now made a video of that. Um, and this is about windows. I think he scrapes the paints from, uh, from there. Uh, three. Okay, quote of the day. Uh, make today so awesome yesterday gets jealous and so again these are he gets to pick it we have a brief discussion we go into gratefuls um, it is impossible to be uh, miserable and be thankful and grateful so we want that to be a positive thing so we build it in gratefuls are something you think you, you don't have to say one but most people do uh, at the beginning it starts us out kind of cheesy oh, I'm thankful for my health I'm thankful for whatever People, I'm thankful for the weather, uh, but people actually get real deep into these. So that you're forming that uh, community bond there. And we're also fully decentralized, by the way. Uh, it's, it works really good together in a room like this, but we are a fully decentralized company. We do some neck stretching. So this is all, you're doing this all like by Zoom? This is all by Zoom. The person leading it, this is Doug's. I don't, I haven't seen this. This happened while I was gone. Doug was leading the meeting. Um, and then he's walking us through it, right? Okay, then he has the waste of the day. His waste of the day was waiting, um, which is uh, each process makes other processes later. Oh my gosh, Doug has a video of his waste of the day. My waste of the day is waiting. We are waiting on tenants to come in that are suitable to rent the rooms we have ready. And I'm also waiting on the older tenants that's been here that the rooms haven't been renovated to move so we can renovate those rooms. So that was his waste of the day, um, which again, is a video he shot formulating his own ideas and he uploaded it to YouTube. Okay, now he, he gets into the waste, the eight waste story and so on.